Welcome to My Club Pro TV, Bromley FC, the road to Wembley. In this episode, we turn our attentions to round four when the Ravens were handed a tie away at Aldershot Town. In a goalless first half, there were chances at either end. First, James Alabi tried a spectacular effort from distance, but it threw wide of the post. At the other end, Bromley goalkeeper Rhys Charles Cook made a fantastic fingertip save from a Glover long range effort. The deadlock was finally broken on 55 minutes. A driving run from Harry Forster ended with the player being fouled on the edge of the box. Up step, Joe Partington curling an absolute peach into the top left hand corner. The game was wrapped up late on. Bromley broke on the counter and a good move ended with Alexander slotting through the legs of the advancing Aldershot keeper. Job done and the Ravens march on to the fifth round. Joe, thanks for joining us, good to see you. Um, it was a tough game, wasn't it? A busy time in the season, but you know, just talk me through that free kick. When you, when you stood over it there, do you know exactly what you're doing with it? Uh, I had an idea of, of what I wanted to do, yeah. I was obviously talking to you off camera just then. Yeah. Um, it was actually the first time I'd ever taken a free kick um, in a match day. What way to do it? Uh, and yeah, I mean, it was one in ones, not, not too bad, but. Keepers end up on the floor in the back of the net, nice. It was quite nice. I mean, it's a good feeling to, to score a goal, of course, but. Not much of a celebration? No, I mean, we. Confident in your own ability there? <laughs> we, a few of us practiced them. I wouldn't like, I'm not going to lie and say that we practice every day after no. training. It's, uh, you know, the whole Beckham story where he's out playing all like free kicks after training every day and stuff. We, we don't do that, but we do casually practice. Um, yeah. There's a few of us who do casually practice, and, um, and up until that point, for whatever reason, I hadn't played around that time in, in the league games as, as much as I would have hoped to. Sure. So the manager had been on us um, collectively about sort of our, our quality from set pieces and, and especially, you know, uh, free kicks in and around the goal. And for whatever reason, I, you know, I thought that I might have an opportunity to score. Um, and when I did, I was, you know, it was half probably not really knowing how to celebrate. Yeah. And, and half sort of at those early stages of an FA Trophy game, you, you know, you know what it's like. It, they're, they're not glamorous fixtures. It, you know, you can't run off doing a, doing a knee slide. So um, it, was, it was sort of a combination of just feeling good. Um, Had the confidence to step up yeah, and execute and it well. Decided that I would just walk off. They're nice. And as, as a more, you know, you mentioned it's like early in the rounds there, but you're a more senior player in the team. Do you feel a degree of responsibility to grab that game by the horns? Uh, and... Possibly, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, a little bit. That, I mean, that game in particular, obviously, was an opportunity for me to play, which, yeah. which around that time I, I hadn't done much of, um, including the Dover game and the Tunbridge Angels game um, were all, possibly adverts for the football club in, in terms of the, the youth products that, yeah. that we have, especially the Dover game. And you've shown good faith in the youth, hasn't he? In this yeah, it, like, it, you know, we went to Dover with, with no real expectations of, of what was going to go on. And, and I think we finished the game with, with quite possibly like four or five 17 year olds, guys from the, you know, have come through the academy and the college system. Great and as, for them. Yeah, as, uh, for the kids, uh, incredible. And, and as an advert for the club, I'm coming off the pitch and, and saying well done to all the young players, about four or five, possibly even six debuts that day of, of young guys. And, and, you know, when you're that age, it means an enormous amount to you. So to play that role for, for them in that game was, was obviously quite nice. Yeah. Um, we had some, you know, just looking at that picture there, Marcus had, uh, in, his, in his first year of playing senior football properly has, has made quite a lot of nice appearances. And that was another moment for him to play. But, that game was, was, a, was a, probably a combination of guys that had been in the team quite regularly and, and guys who, who wanted to, I'm going to say, prove a point to the manager because that's not really what it is, but sure. to play and to, and to feel like they were getting something out of being a footballer, you know, so. Yeah, and am I right in saying that this will be your first trip to Wembley? First trip as a, as a player, yeah, I've certainly been many times um, as a fan. Um, what's, it like, what's it like to have that to look forward to now? Incredible, you know, uh, yeah. like, um, sort of embarrassed you know almost embarrassed to admit that in a in a I'm about 14 coming on 15 years deep into a football career that yeah. that have ne I've never felt too much success okay. I've been involved in teams that have had success um, without really playing a major part in that I've I've played in in great teams that for whatever reason finished the season mid-table or or you know like just missed out on playoffs or just done this or just done that but never really 
had that moment of elation where it's like it's a cup final or you've been promoted and, and you feel like I was a massive part of that. Sure. Never, so never really had that. So this isn't, you know, the, probably the, I'm not sure what's going to go on past this, but like a, a, the biggest opportunity that I've got really to, yeah. to achieve and to say that I was, I was a big part of that. Okay. And you mentioned you've had quite a long career. Um, you uh, just take you back to the sort of the grassroots part of that career. You played for. We're looking at a photo we've got on screen now um, of you at Crofton Mini Soccer. Um, how important was that grassroots foundation? I mean, uh, yeah, of course. I think for for any player, they're, they've got incredible memories of being a young kid, just sort of enjoying the football. Yeah. Um, I played with my friends. I was lucky enough that, that you know some of my friends were quite talented as well, yeah. and I played with them up until probably the, the you know the age of of around 12, 13 years old when Portsmouth as, as an academy decided that you weren't able to play with the, your, you know, your grassroots and, and your academy at the same time. But um, you know, when you're six, seven, eight years old, football is, just becomes you, you know, your whole life and, and everything that you like to do. So those, you know, those moments were, were pretty special. Uh, and as a pro, obviously your player development needs are very well catered for. Um, do you ever look back and feel gratitude to the grassroots volunteers that gave you their time in the early days? Of course. Um, we, we'd like off camera, we just had a chat and the guys that are involved with grassroots football, uh, you know, when kids are uh, early on in their football journey, should you say, are so incredibly important. I don't think in, during probably that time they realise how important um, the friendship group that I've got, you know, of guys that I grew up with playing, still my best friends now, their fathers who looked after the teams that we all played in. You know, they're coming to Wembley to, you know, to watch me and I'm, and I'm sure it's going to be special for them to, to watch a game knowing that somebody involved in, you know, however it, it finishes, that somebody involved in this match is somebody that they've had an impact on in their life. Yeah. And, uh, and at that moment, obviously, when, you know, when I'm eight, nine years old, Nobody knows what, you know, you might see a talented footballer at that age, but nobody really truly knows what, what sort is going to happen to that person or that player. Um, but without those moments, you know, you, you don't go on to, to end up having a career in football. So no. it doesn't matter, you know, who it is or, or what the impact is or how important your, the involvement is with that player at that age. Um, it can lead to, to truly special things. So grassroots football is, you know, is is more of a benefit than I think people think so at, at the time. Yeah, un undoubtedly, those, um, those people will be as proud as you will be on the day walking out as they will be watching. Yeah. Um, and we see a young Joe there. Back then, did you ever expect to achieve the things you have in the game? Would, would young Joe be proud? I think so. Um, I mean, uh, you know, you don't have aspirations to, to play professional football until it becomes an option when you leave school, I suppose. Um, and even then, like I was, you know, I got to 15 years old, I left school, I was released by Portsmouth um, and then I ended up with Bournemouth. But if the Portsmouth decided that they obviously didn't want to take me as, as a youth team player, I sort of ended up thinking like, right, I'm going to have to go to college um, with the rest of my friends. And that sort of, I'm going to be a professional footballer, it's just sort of like, it's, it's obviously based on somebody else's opinion and somebody else's yeah. choice. Like I could do absolutely everything that I could and, and my mindset could have been, oh, I'm definitely going to make it. But ultimately the you know the, the choices with somebody else so being given that opportunity at Bournemouth was uh, what experience rejection and then to given an opportunity at Bournemouth was was almost uh, end up being a positive thing you know when, like, when yeah I mean, that was sort of felt like I knew what it was like for somebody to tell me that I wasn't good enough it worked out in, in, in the end and sort of that experience ended up helping me in the long term but yeah, I mean, as a young kid, if, if I told an eight-year-old me that you were going to play, what am I now, 14 years into professional football, I'm sure he'd be pretty pleased about it. But it, was, it never truly becomes an ambition until somebody asks you to play for their team. So, uh, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure he'd be pretty pleased. Great stuff. Joe, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining me for coffee. No, I appreciate um, it. Good luck at Wembley. Thank you very much. Cool. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a ramble.